up, everybody? It's Jared Rencher here at the Players Club, a podcast by the players for the people. We're going to talk about week one, uh, our game against Georgia and how it went. And then also going to talk about one of the biggest stories in week one, Zeb Nolan, grad assisted turn starting quarterback for the University of South Carolina. I'm telling you guys, you don't want to miss this story. And as we said last week, you guys sent in questions. Thank you guys for sending them in. Some really good stuff to get into. But first, week one. If you're a college football fan, you saw this week we played Georgia uh, this past weekend in Charlotte, which we call our second home because that's always where the ACC championship is. It was the first time playing in front of a packed stadium in a year and a half, two years, whatever it's been since pre-COVID. And so the atmosphere was amazing. It just felt good seeing like people on the sidelines again, the stands packed. The energy in the place was, was crazy. Going into, we knew it was going to be a heavyweight matchup and it did not go how I wanted it to. But at the same time, it was a close game, and really both defenses gave up three points, which it really felt like a 1970s classic where it's just like before we threw the pick where it was a 3-3 three, a three, three game. I'm in a school uh, where people, the expectation is to win and win at the highest level. And there's a lot that comes with that. Obviously, you get the glory of playing a big school and you get so much love when everything's going, wrong, going right. But the moment you do slip up and things don't go exactly your way, which is life, a lot of people lose their minds. Like, it's, it's the first week. We lost to a top five team. People are acting like we lost to Bishop Sycamore. That's what it seems like. It's all going to be good. We got things to learn from. We got to we gotta get better. That's if we win a game or lose it. We got to get better because we got a whole, we got a long season ahead. This is just the opener. But moving forward, uh, heading to week two, it's a different mindset, different mentality. So we went from playing a top five matchup, a playoff game where you got NFL stars, Everybody flying into Charlotte. They want to see the Tigers and the Bulldogs go at it. You switch it. So we're playing a, a smaller school, FCS school, the uh, South Carolina State this week. And it's a different mindset. When you want it, when you have to be great, you play to a state or you don't play to an opponent. Playing Georgia, it's easier to get amped up for the game. You get to, you do more. You watch more film. There is a temptation. When you play smaller schools that you you kind of slack off a little bit. You don't watch as much tape because you're like, it'll just happen. We know here at Clemson, this is like a lot of these guys are Super Bowls. Because, I mean, they're like, if I can put a Clemson guy on, my, on the first play of my highlight tape, that is the mindset. So, like, right now, I'm I'm trying to be just as focused, and our team is trying to be just as focused as we were the previous week, this week, because we want to play to a standard, and we also know, like, what their mentality is coming into this game. But coming up next, Zab Nolan, a grad assistant turned starting QB for South Carolina Gamecocks. It's a story you don't want to miss. Literally blew me away. Can't wait for you guys to hear it. All right, so here with Zeb Nolan, uh, the headline of the week has been grad assistant turned quarterback, starting quarterback, coming off a big week, uh, four touchdowns. Here with my man. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. Been living the dream. <laughs> I bet, man. Look, we're going to go through it from the top. But obviously the headline is, you know what I'm saying, assistant coach, analyst. What was your title? Just like, so I'm clear. Like an offensive GA, like I wasn't, I was going to help all the positions, you know, when, whatever they needed on and off the field. And uh, it was kind of crazy just because I didn't exactly know what I was getting into when I came down here, just because Beamer had called me back in January and I was, and Coach Satterfield and I was like, yeah, I'm all in. Uh, I'll be there in May when my spring season's over. I'm not going to pass up on an SEC opportunity. And then got here and just had fun. For people that don't know, your dad was a high school coach, which if you know high school coaches, that means a lot. How was it growing up being a, a coach's son? You know, it's been good. He'd always been successful. Um, he actually got his first head coaching job at 25 in North Carolina, and he just kind of wow. grew himself, and he's always, you know, adapted and adjusted and changed with times. And um, we moved to Georgia. The first three years, they were Region 8, uh, AAA region champs and made big runs in the playoffs. And um, then, you know, when I got to high school, I played my freshman and sophomore year at Stevens County. And then after that, uh, my dad wanted to get me in a school system that was, you know, more beneficial on the school side than what I was getting. So we moved to Oconee County, who is pretty prestigious school-wise, and they hadn't had many good years, but they always have potential. I mean, Zet uh, Mettenberger played there, and they've had all, sure. they've always had Baller. good talent. And um, so moved there. We had two good years, won eight games, then ten games. And uh, through all that, you know, going through recruiting camps, all that, I flew up to Toledo and went to a camp there, and they offered me when Matt Campbell was there. We got the Iowa State Crazy. job, and uh, he flew me out there in December, and I was enrolling early. So I flew out there, and I was like, this looks like a place I could play. So I went out there and, you know, just 
I tore my ACL my freshman year, so kind of got humbled a little bit. So you go to Iowa State, uh, you get a I'm full, full ride, I'm assuming. Talk about, like, how long were you there? Like, what's, what was that, like, journey like? Yeah, so I enrolled early in January of 16, and then I was there until December of 18. And, uh, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I think, obviously, Coach Campbell's had a lot of success, and they're good. And, um, you know, I still pull for all those guys today just because I played with a bunch of them and I know them. Um, but I, I really enjoyed my time there. It's just one of those things, you know, Brock is a really good quarterback, and I just wanted to yeah. see myself on the field somewhere else. And, right. I, you know, I, I, and out of respect, I went up to him uh, before the Texas Tech game, and I was like, hey, look, Coach, like, I love you. I love everything about this program. Um, I just feel like it's my duty to tell you at the end of the season I'm probably going to transfer to play. But right. I want you to be able to look for a guy not being a scramble because we were thin yeah. at quarterback back then. Like, we didn't have many on the roster. Um, as it was and I just I was just like I just wanted you to know that and uh, you know we kind of talked about it and he's like you know I really appreciate that uh, not in a bad way he's like I want you to go visit these schools and figure out where you want to play instead of kind of make a decision just by getting recruited once I entered the portal yeah bro people don't understand that too that's a good point just because if you leave a school and like you leave early say you transfer like if they didn't recruit another guy in your position you leave the coach kind of in like a bind because they're like, all right, who do I have to play this position? And so a lot of people think they're just like, there's so much influx of, you know what I'm saying, college football players coming in. But they didn't recruit a guy for your position. They'll just be short. And so that's like a, that's a good point. And even um, for this show, literally my whole thought process was I want people to understand, like, some of the things that we just know because we've seen it, especially for six years in college football. How does the transfer portal work? So how it kind of worked for me was it's ironic. Like, it's a, this is a South Carolina Clemson thing, but Kelly Bryant went in two days before me. So, like, I was really Smart nervous. Bro. I was like, you know, he's a great quarterback. He started a lot of games, um, right. played great. And I was like, dang, like, I'm not going to get to go where, you know, there's going to be schools that want him over me. I knew that. But I was like, you know, I, maybe I should go FCS and just be eligible right away, not have to sit out. That was before all the one-time transfer rules. You know, like, yeah, me, and Ke- big. Yeah. me and Kelly were, like, the first two in it. And it's, like – at first, I was nervous. I was like, well, what if I don't get what I want? I have to go back home and not to knock a program, but like Mercer or something, you know. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a big difference right. between North Dakota State and the FCS. And, and I went on my visits to South Carolina or not South, uh, South Dakota, South Dakota State and North Dakota State. When I went to North Dakota State, I just fell in love with like all the guys on the team. Um, you know, it felt like home away from home and a lot like the same type of relationships I had in high school with the teammates. And that's what really made me go there, um, you know. And the other thing I loved about my time there is it's like the new transfer rule. They never promised me a job where the other two schools were right. like, look, you know, you're going to come in, you're going to have, you're going to compete, but you're going to be that dude. And North Dakota State never said one thing about Trey or anybody. It's just like, we want you to come play here, but we also want you to come in here and compete and be the best you you can be. And if that, and if you play, you play. And if you don't play, then just continue to compete and get better. And I knew Coach Kleiman was – like, he told me straight up, like, Zeb, I don't know where I'll be, who's the new K State head coach at the time. And he's like, I don't know where I'm going to be, but, you know. And to me, him telling me the truth is like, well, at least they're going to tell you the truth up there, whether you're playing or not. So that's really what right. made my decision final. And I got up there and spring ball, I mean, Trey was – at North Dakota State, when you're a freshman, you're a rookie. Like – that's just what they call you. So I was like, Trey's a rookie. I was the older guy. And from day one, like I called him right when I committed. And I was like, look, I'm coming to school here. I don't want no bad blood. I don't want you thinking I'm coming in here just because I played at Iowa State. I'm going to right. you know, try to walk all over you guys. And our relationship started there. And um, it was just good, healthy competition just made our team better because everybody else wanted to compete because we were competing, you know? Right. How much of like – and just – Obviously, it's about you, but obviously, you play with a guy like Trey Lance, who just went. He was a first round pick. How much, like, so was it a was it a battle, or you know, so how long did you get? How long it was it before he got named the starter? Or did you get named the starter? I mean, it was neck and neck all the way up until the week before the game, and wow. we sat down with the coaches, and they're like, "We like me and Trey didn't know who was going to play, but we had talked about it before of either whoever's playing, we're going to have each other's back." So when we had to meet with the OC, the quarterback coach, and the head coach. They're like, we're going to go with Trey. And I was like, okay, great. You know, I'm going to have your back no matter what. 
And uh, ever since then, like, that's kind of how we, we're best friends in the whole world. Like, all this stuff that's come around to South Carolina, he was the first one to know I was going to do it, and he was the very first one to call me when I got named the starter last Tuesday. But, uh, you know, just having a friend like that and seeing what really changed my life forever um, was just seeing a guy that's 19 years old who had every excuse to make to not know how to prepare, not know exactly what to do. He is so detailed um, and OCD about what he does, and I think that's why he's successful in the league. Is He's 21 now, but when I first met him at 19, you know, he could have been immature. He didn't have to show right. up every day to watch film together. He didn't have to take detailed notes because he didn't have to know. But kind of the culture up there that had been passed down from Brock Jensen, Carson Wentz, Easton Stick, and Trey and I was just help each other. That was really – I never went there because those guys played there. I just wanted to go there just because of how everything was set up. And, um, you know, I think it just made us both better at the end of the day. No doubt. Uh, last thing on Trey, just like I've been around some first-round talented guys. Like what do you think – like, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, you got a football IQ and people, like they just see, all right, I got to go first round. What do you think really separated, like made him who he is? Like, And obviously somebody – the scout saw something in him. You know, he's – FCS school, like, what'd you see from Trey Lance? I think I told I told the coaches this, this the other day here. Like, what do you think sets him apart? I was like, you know, I competed my balls off, like, strenuous every day, exhausted every outlet. And it's like, no matter what, like, I'd tell him, like, hey, I think you should do this, or hey, I think you should do that. And he might not do it the first time, but, like, and you see it now. Like, Trey gets better every single day. In, in some type of capacity, whereas like some guys kind of stay the same or playing out in a certain area. Like when I say he right. takes everything serious, like I think that's why he's going to be successful in the league is it, he gets better all the time. And like, for instance, a, a little story about it, like we were throwing on the run one day, like as a big emphasis in practice and he was throwing, he was accurate, but he's throwing a duck on a comeback to the field when he was rolling yeah. out off of naked. And we stayed for two hours after practice and, like, I was standing there videoing him, like, trying to help him. Like, I've been around uh, some good quarterback coaches, so I was, like, trying to help him out. And we stayed for two hours, and the next day he goes out there and he's ripping it on a dime. And it's like he just can – you know, like, he's his ceiling right. is so high. Like, he, I, he still hasn't reached his full potential, in my opinion, just because he's 21. And I, that's, like, when I say he changed my life, that's how he humbly changed my life is how he continues to get better every day and his, you know, his drive is – like, kind of scary, really. All right, moving on, bro. Just um, – so after last season, you played in the spring league. Um, you Did you think that was it? Like, I knew it was it. Like, I told him in January I was coming. So, in my head, I had till May. No matter what – whether we made it to the playoffs, won the championship, no matter what, I knew I was taking the helmet off and the pads off in May. So, we were at Sam Houston State, and we lost. And, like, I walked off the field. It's emotional, right? Like, it's the last time you're ever going to play. Right. So – Going lot we didn't have a locker room there. We were in a tent outside, and like we were standing on the asphalt. And I'll never forget, like I told our team this, like I'll never forget standing there and unbuckling my pads. And like you know, like you unbuckle your pads every day, and you take that for granted. I was like, this is a but it's, it's different. Yeah, it's like, different. And then I don't know about you, but me, every like the last thing I do before I get in the shower every day is cut my tape off. And I never thought cutting my tape off would be such a like a vivid moment in my life it's like this is a like last, a movie scene bro like the like, music's playing you know what i'm saying tears are being yeah. shed everybody's coming to you giving a hug you know i sit down and we had to go shower like a little bit away so i had you know my pants still on but i had to cut tape off and i'm standing and I like i just started crying again and i was like holy cow like i never thought taking a shark cutting your tape off and balling <laughs> that tape up and throwing it away was so emotional but it was so you're when did you get you got to South Carolina in May so I'm literally giving people the one-on-one -on -one. you still got head coaches you got you got pretty much the offensive coaches defensive coaches underneath them you got analysts who usually are people that are paid underneath them you have graduate assistants GAs then underneath them you might have somebody's son student worker who's just there hanging out and so like what, what was your like GA and what, what were you in charge of like just film breakdown you know what, what were you doing Right, so when I first got here, like, my very first thing, like, obviously everybody calls something a little different on defense. We both play offense. You right. know, your cover two is cover two, but there's, like, the blitzes and different people to Cover two, up. right, you got yeah. saw, you got – you know what I'm saying? People got different yeah. names for all different names yeah. for all of it. So I'm, like, learning that. And then, like, I sit down at my – they're like, hey, this is your desk. Sit down. They're like, 
we're doing like this summer breakdown. They're like, hey, you need to break down these three games. And like, I'm like, okay, fine. I was like, well, you got to tell me what you call this stuff because what I see it as might be something different you see it as. So, right. you know, shot through that. And then they're like, hey, you need to learn how to use Visio. And for people that don't know, Visio is like it's a Microsoft database that's made for football where you can draw plays online or like on the computer and it looks real clean. And like, hey, you need right. to learn Visio. So I'm like, all right, sweet. So like I spent the next, I don't know, two weeks drawing up. You know, because the spring was new for the staff, so they like it was like a test for what plays they liked and what they didn't like, emerging thoughts and processes, you know, what what was good, what was bad, what we do good, right. what we do bad. And uh, so, like, I got the spring, you know, what we're going to go into the summer with. So I'm drawing all this up, you know, trying to get the lines right, trying to get whoever to 12-yard curl drawn up yeah, perfect. Yeah. So, like, I did that for two weeks straight just staring at a computer. And, and in my head, I'm like, golly, this kind of sucks, you know. And uh, then the camp season hits. And I don't know yeah, how camp, camp season – Like, I have no clue how camp works as a coach. As a player, you work out, you do summer runs, you do whatever in the evening with the quarterbacks. and the you, you just try to stay alive and keep pushing day by day. And you know? I'm getting here, and they're like, okay, well, you got to do this work before camp starts. You got to get this done after camp. You got to run camp all day, and it's hot as anything. Wait, so you went through – so, yeah, what day was, like, the shift? Like, so you went through all camp and was still a GA. Oh, so my birthday was August 16th, which was a Monday. Happy belated, bro. Happy I appreciate belated. it. And then that's when I found out I was going to, like, I'm doing this for real. So like, that's what when I, this? <laughs> yeah, so, like, when I say Trey called me, like, Trey called me at midnight. I was doing bed checks for the freshmen at midnight. Like, no, nobody knew but me and the coaches on my, like, at midnight. It was, like, at 10. And my birthday, yeah. you know, and Trey calls me to wish me happy birthday. And I'm like, you won't believe this. Like, I'm about to go back and try to play. <laughs> what was it like, like, all right, getting ready, call, you call your parents. You know what I'm saying? Like, tell me, like, all right, so you call, obviously Trey, you talk about Trey Lance calling you and you're telling him. Uh, you call your parents. What's your dad say? Your dad's a coach. He was like, what was he like? All right, son. Well, you know. He yeah, he's like, well, go out there and give it to y'all. You ain't got much to lose. You know, like, go out there and have fun and cut it loose. Like, there's no expectation. Like, if you suck, you ain't going to play. If you play good, you're going to play. Like, just go <laughs> have fun. You know, he's, like, keeping it real. He's like, hey, just go have fun. If it don't work, it don't work. But, you know, just going out there. And I truly – like, I told the media – the first time I talked to the Carolina media, I was like, I literally just try to embrace every period of practice. I don't try to skip ahead and look at team blitz. You know, when it's indie, I'm trying to soak it all right. up. And, you know, that's kind of been my approach yeah. the whole time is just like you're a six year guy. You know that you never know the the, the next, you know, the last time you're going to put them on. So I just go out there right. and soak it up and try to have fun and have a lot of good energy. What, what, what was the lead up? So obviously quarterbacks at Carolina went down and got hurt. Like what was like the like the first initial baby steps to even this being like an actual thing? Because obviously it just he didn't just drop it on you. Like what was the. That's good you asked because this summer. You know how you could bring recruits – like there's a new rule where like a single guy could come to thing and do like a, a workout, whatever. Yeah. And like – Yeah, it's, it's something – yeah, I know yeah, what you're talking about. So they were like, hey, can you throw to this tight end? I'm like, <laughs> well, hell yeah, I'll throw to the tight end, but, uh, you know, let's do it. So I throw it, and, the, and Coach Sat looked at me, and he's like, too bad you ain't got any more time left. And I said, oh, really? I got a year left. I just didn't use it. Because of hey, COVID. So right. then it was like a joke all of June, all of July, most of camp. You know, like Sunday, I was literally printing – I printed installs off, did bed checks, and Monday morning when they were like, hey, you're going to practice tomorrow, go get a physical. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So that's how crazy it was. And then, you know, just hit the ground running. And, like, you know how it is as a player. When you, when you hadn't done it for a while, it's like – Yeah, you got to get back in that mode. Yeah, like you got to get back locked in and practice. You're not just looking at a piece of paper anymore like a coach and being like, oh, exactly. well, here's this play. Okay, well, right. I'm making sure the receivers are lined up right, tight ends are lined up right, making sure that – Call, a call your protection, Yeah, everything. like making sure a guy's not turning around looking for the play as a GA, and now I'm up here like standing here in my stance, making sure they're all lined up right, you know? What was it like from the like the locker room perspective? Because our, our, our GAs – and just keep it – I'm going to keep it real on here – Sometimes GAs, not all GAs, but sometimes they're tryhards. I, I feel like you're a cool GA. 
sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's trying to climb that ladder, trying to get in the coach's good graces. But obviously, guys, like, I mean, we we'll like to say all guys are nice guys and presentable. But you know what I'm saying? Some guys may have treated you, like, a certain way. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, all right, now nah, he's the quarterback. So, like, what was that like in the locker room? Like, what was it like for y'all? My, for me, the first day was weird because, like, you know how it is. Coaches don't really go in the locker room and just talk right. to guys and hang out. And But, yeah, I just went in there and, you know, everybody's got their locker space. And then there's me, right? right? There's one locker room. There's one locker left in the whole, like, locker room. And they give it to me, you know. And uh, I was just – trying to be cool with everybody, you know, get to know the guys I didn't know on defense, you know, because right. I've been a summer GA. And, I know. Uh, so I got to, you know, started really trying to integrate myself into, like, our lock- locker room has rows. It's not completely open. So I just try to go in there, you know, every day and talk to a new guy or get to know another guy. Like, I you go in the first game, you know what I'm saying, you get rolling, you, you throw four touchdowns. Or what, how, was it four touchdowns? Like, walk me through your set, four touchdowns. Okay. How – How'd you feel? You know what I'm saying? You could suck, but you didn't. You had a good day at the office. Right. And, uh, you know, I got Connor Shaw, who played here, you know, legend. Um, legend. He he really helped me through the week. Like, every day of the week, he's like, all right, this is how this is going to go when you get in the stadium. This is how this is going to go when you board the bus. Like, you know, he's done it a thousand times. So right. for me, you know, he walked me through the Carolina walk. He walked me through what it's going to be like pregame. He walked me through, like, what it's going to be like when you come out of the tunnel at kickoff. The first drive on offense, it don't matter if you're home or away. You know, y'all have a loud stadium, too. They're not that, you know, they're not that quiet. You're still screaming and yelling a little bit, even when you're on offense, because everybody's right. juiced up. And we got the ball first. And, you know, he prepared me for all those moments mentally. So when I got out there, I was just kind of relaxed. And it's funny you say that, because – those he's like, you look calm out there and relaxed. I'm like, hell, I am. You're right. <laughs> you know, what it's, you like, do. it's like, like you guys play Georgia and you got some guys that are flying around to the football, licking people. And right, you know, it, it was nice having that confidence, knowing that like, if it's, it's the first game, like it doesn't matter if you're playing EIU or Georgia or Alabama, like somebody's gonna bust. It don't matter. Right. Yeah, it, it happens. And you know, it's kind of a like a just a slight sigh of relief of knowing. If he does come through scot free, this one ain't gonna hurt. Like, you know, like when we play you guys, Mike comes free. <laughs> that one's probably gonna hurt. Yeah, it yeah. might be a little different. You know what I mean? And like, just that in a sense made made me play just a little looser. And yeah. uh, you know, I still wanted to go out and be accurate as anything. You know, because I wanted For to sure. get better. Um, and you know how these FCS games can go. It don't. I mean, you saw four or five teams won. They're they're gonna give you everything they got. Thank you, bro, for coming on. Seriously, it's been so cool to hit a story. Um, obviously, graduate assistant. Just not any any grad assistant, though. You guys have learned to listen to the podcast. Uh, Zeb Nolan, been a great story. South Carolina fans, even though I'm a Clemson fan and I can't be, you know what I'm saying, rooting for them forever until Thanksgiving week. But I root for you guys. Looking forward to, you know what I'm saying, the state getting better when you guys are better. Yeah, well, one, thank you for having me on the show and reaching out. And, uh, you know, I'm, I was, I'm really happy to do it. I get so used to talking to – a thousand reporters and, you know, just getting to connect the guy that's one-on-one that does the same thing. We're both super seniors, got a lot in common from the same area. Come on. You know, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to play you guys, you know, in Thanksgiving and get to meet you in person and get a picture and dap you up. But, uh, you know, gotcha. I wish you not, nothing but the best, you and your program. And, um, you know, keep getting at it. I'm always pulling for you. Uh, no matter what you do in life, we'll always be brothers now. Uh, that's kind of how I sure. roll. If I connect with a guy, I I got you back no matter what. You know, like I said it with Trey, I got you back no matter what um, in the future. And uh, I wish you guys nothing but the best, and thanks for having me. All right, so last week we asked you guys to send in questions. Thank you guys for sending them in. So here they are. Let's get to them. Ryan Latham from Anderson, South Carolina, said, besides NIL, what has changed the most about college football in your six years? One, shout out to the home city, Anderson, South Carolina. From my perspective, playing it like Clemson, it's just gotten bigger and better. The food's gotten better. When I first got here, we didn't have the new facility. And so really just the money that's been pour- poured into the sport, I think everything's just gotten gotten more grand. We don't have two days anymore, which I'm, some people are mad about it, but I'm like, thank you, God, we don't have <laughs> two days anymore. Um, even though they're not the traditional two days where you actually have like 
a full go practice in the morning, full go practice in the evening, it was still just too much. The game has become a lot safer. Some of those big hits or big time plays are being cut away from the sport. He said besides NIL, but I feel like NIL is huge. And, and talk, speaking of NIL, I want to give a shout out to, to Mogul. They were the people who helped me kind of get this show running. They introduced me to the people that are producing it. So shout out to them. And look at us now, guys. We're, we're doing a podcast and it's going great. Week two is happening right before your eyes. And so the next question comes from Sarah Beth. It says, how do you block out all the negativity after a loss? Social media can be cruel. Yes and amen to that. I think it's just, it comes with the territory. And because like you get you get more love than any other college student, but you will get crapped on more than any other college student because of like what you do. And a lot of times it's a it could be a way that teams are divided or come together. And I, I feel like my experience at Clemson has been like it's always been a way where like all right we hear the outside noise, but we're gonna stick together and be inside out. Because in the end of the day, you got talkers and you have doers. Those people talk about what we do. So if we want to change what they talk about, do something different, and we have the power because we control our performance and how we play and all those things. It's like to go out and change the narrative. So that's always been like the approach that I've kind of grown up to or been the culture I've, I've kind of been playing in. It's like, all right, let them talk. It doesn't feel good because um, you're a human being and you see people like talking bad about you personally, the people you love, the program you love, or one of your really good friends. Don't buy the good stuff either because sometimes they'll hype you up so much that you forget that you got to go out and get focused and win the game. And hopefully if you handle your business, the narrative will change to what you want to in the end. My man Moss from Gainesville, Florida, uh, said, what inspires your style? Yeah, uh, and that means a lot to me, honestly, because uh, I like to pride myself on having some style. Like, I feel like I take a little bit from a, a lot of different people, whether on Instagram or people I know personally, and kind of make it my own. Put your little, little spice on it, and you get your style. So I don't know I, what inspires it. A lot of different people, um, some famous people, some people I know that I'm like, that dude can dress. It ain't really always about what you're wearing, but it's about how you're wearing it. If you believe you look good, most of the times people are gonna be like, all right, you look good. All right, guys, that's been week two here at the Players Club Podcast. We're getting better each week, we're learning. And look here, we even got a microphone uh, for week two. So who knows what's gonna be next week? Who knows who's gonna be on next week? But I wanna thank my guy, Zeb Nolan, for coming on to the show. Literally one of the best stories in college football in a long time and probably going to be one of the biggest stories this year. And just like last week, guys, like, subscribe, comment, do whatever. Come along for the ride. And please send in questions because we would love to have them on the show. That's been week two of the Players Club podcast. See you guys next week. Have a good week.